第三十一对演讲的题目是 Number Five， 计时开始。Honorable judges, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. A few weeks ago, I met my Indonesian friend who now studies in Taiwan on a Southern Sunshine Scholarship. We've been friends for almost a year now. We often share stories of our hometowns. With our mutual understanding of each other's evening, we've become very close. This has led me to think about how we can enhance our relationships with our new self-bound policy partner countries. Derek, what sort of things can we do to enhance our relationships with those target nations? Thank you, Ruby. The new self-bound policy has already had a great impact on Taiwan. Focusing on talent exchanges and resource sharing, Taiwan has found a new direction. Thanks to this policy, Taiwan has enjoyed a series of collaborative efforts with other Southeast Asian countries. For instance, Taiwan helped Myanmar to build two solar photovoltaic mini-grid systems in order to provide much-needed electricity. In addition, Taiwan has also established the Tilapia Ecological and Creative Park in Yunlin, which draws attention for Taiwan's biotechnology by allowing more associations with other biotech companies from the Southeast Asia. Through the exchanges of technology and resources, we can build stable partnerships and create even more cooperation opportunities in the future based on the previous foundations. We can create win-win situations and help Taiwan improve even more, but most importantly, enhancing the relationship between the cooperating countries. Next, my teammates Olivia and Andy are going to elaborate more on this issue. Thank you, Derek. We can use our advanced solar power technology to enhance the relationships with our target nations. Take what we've done in Myanmar as an example. Myanmar is a country which abounds in minerals, petroleum, and natural gas. However, in rural areas, two-thirds of their household lack access to electricity, instead relying on candles, kerosene, and batteries for supply lighting at night. After a year of hard work in 2017, Taiwan International Cooperation and Development Fund and Ministry of Foreign Affairs founded two solar photovoltaic mini-grid systems for lighting in rural areas of Myanmar. They allow students to study at night efficiently and prolong the villagers' working time. The efforts Taiwan ICDF and MOFA have made consolidate the relationships with our target nations in an economical and eco-friendly way. Let's welcome Andy to introduce the ecological park. Thank you, Olivia. As we tried to show in our drama earlier, Taiwanese youth are so well equipped that they can help other countries develop their natural resources through the use of advanced technology. Take Wang Yifeng as an example. He's a Taiwanese businessman that has successfully extracted collagen from tilapia fish scales, then turned to recover collagen into various beauty products. Moreover, he set up the Tilapia Ecological and Creative Park, which has drawn the attention of several companies from Southeast Asia. Several representatives from these companies even came to visit the park in order to learn more about Taiwan's biotechnology techniques. There is even a local tilapia restaurant in the park now. Most important of all, the annual Southeast Asia International Joint Research and Training Program was held in this park in 2017. This event emphasized the exchanges of cooperation, experience, and technology between Southeast Asian countries. To sum up, interacting with our Southeast Asian neighbors helps foster mutual understanding, while at the same time providing quality of life improvements on both sides. Ruby, what's your conclusion? Thank you, Andy. From supplying steady and sustainable sources of energy to share our success in biotechnology with the target nations, there are surely lots of things we can do to fulfill the core value of the new cell phone policy. By doing so, it is undeniable that we cannot merely improve interaction among people, but also build a strong, unbreakable friendship with our target nations. As the saying goes, one of the most beautiful qualities of true friendship is to understand 
and to be understood. Under a new cell phone policy, we can take effective actions to improve understanding to our lowest target nations and surely build a vibrant relation with our partner countries. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you. The third speaker's question is number five. New cell phone policy aims to improve relationships with a host of countries in Taiwan's immediate vicinity. Taiwan's MOFA has a vast array of programs and promotion aimed at building our name among an NSP partners. Going beyond government, how can regular citizens help to build goodwill and understanding with our NSP friends and neighbors? So today, we're exploring some existing avenues that are open to the public that put us in positions to enhance these relationships. We are considering humanitarian aid, education, and travel, and, suggest, and we will suggest some novel ideas that may not have been tried yet. Taiwan has a long history of providing humanitarian aid to countries in the midst of disasters. During earthquakes, typhoons, or war, injuries, sanitation, and disease can overwhelm damaged medical facilities. As Taiwanese, we understand this type of medical emergency from our own experience. Our people show their compassion by donating huge amounts when a call is made. Taiwan has sent money, food, supplies, and medicine to Japan, Haiti, and the Philippines, to name a few. This goes beyond diplomacy. Most recently, Palu, Sulawesi, Indonesia was hit by a devastating earthquake and tsunami. Recent estimates put the dead at 1,763. Over 5,000 people are still missing. Taiwan's NGO, made up of kind-hearted citizens, have provided basic needs and shelters. Doctors and nurses assemble to care for the injured and prevent further loss of life from the spread of disease. Taiwan's humanitarian aid to NSP partners, especially through volunteer NGOs, is genuinely altruistic. Although this is not done with the intent of enhancing our relations, it is because of this that it does. Anyone who travels know how memorable the experience is. Visiting a new country can be one of the most eye-opening experiences we can have. Travel encourages understanding, cultural awareness, learning, and patience. We believe building tourism in Taiwan to NSB country immigrants would be a fantastic way to enhance our relationship with these countries. Testimonials from so-called culture influencers have great impact. Mira Filsa, a pop star from Malaysia, is speaking on behalf of Taiwan as a Muslim-friendly travel destination. She had 3.3 million Instagram followers who all received her positive vibes about Taiwan. The potential is huge. It gave us the fun idea to create a YouTube travel vlog that aims to help NSB country immigrants get into Taiwan and promote discovery of their new home. The NSB country immigrants could upload their own Taiwan travel videos. It will be a great place to show and discuss in detail the best places to see and eat, activities, and transportation. A vlog such as this, with authentic content by NSB country immigrants, will promote Taiwan as a place of opportunity and new Asian values for people from all walks of life. Positive messaging about traveling Taiwan from NSB country citizens will drive interest and understanding from target countries. Education is a huge plank in Taiwan's NSP platform. Educational exchanges are a common and effective path for students from NSP countries to come to Taiwan and learn. Likewise, Taiwanese students can go overseas and experience educational systems abroad. Our high school, for example, receives a class of Singaporean exchange students this semester. As hosts, we learn a lot about Singaporean culture, education, and language. It has been eye-opening for both parties. Further, Taiwanese universities offer many programs geared toward NSP students. On top of scholarships, we have also provided free medical school to diplomatic allies. Naturally, our reputation is enhanced by these programs. 
We think that actual students from NSP countries would make great ambassadors of the programs they are attending. Successful students could attend trade shows or other educational events in their home country, promoting the programs they've attended. Educational exchanges and scholarships are one of, the, one of the most effective ways we enhance our standing with our NSP partners. Leveraging success stories from NSP country students would provide additional testimonial power. There are many ways that Taiwan can enhance relationships with our NSP partners. MOFA has an immense variety of programs and promotion already in place with this goal in mind. Regular citizens can also be involved. And we've talked about how humanitarian aid, education, and travel can be vehicles for enhancing these relationships. On top of this, we suggested how the power of testimonial from New South Bond partner country citizens can expand the reach of these messages. Three, two, one. Thank you. The 29th speaker's topic is number four. Start. 台湾, for such a small country, definitely boxes above its weight globally. Taiwan has a lot to offer to the international world due to its many standout qualities. During this Taiwan Day event, people will get a sight of this stunning little island. It's forward-thinking, but yet a place that never loses its tradition or values. Ladies, gentlemen, Honorable judges and my fellow young diplomat. When people think about Taiwan, it brings to mind images from the factory for the war. Once a time, everything was labeled made in Taiwan. This is China's label now. Taiwan has evolved. There are companies like Acer, Asus, and HTC. They don't just produce products for other companies, but produce products of their own. A big part of our Taiwan Day will be a showcase of Taiwanese advanced technologies, as well as interactive young scientists competition. The top young scientist competition will be invited to using an app for their invention, while attendees will using for the overall winner. Then Olivia will tell you further about it. Taiwan is known throughout the global business world as one of the East Asian Tigers. Through the late 60s to early 90s, Taiwan saw dramatic development and economic growth. But there was a downside to this rapid growth, the damaging of the environment. Taiwan is now proactively fighting to improve their waterways, air quality, waste reduction, etc. Taiwanese companies are quite innovative in their approach. As part of Taiwan Day, we'd use this platform to showcase these ideas. Who has not heard the little ways of a go girl yet? The electric power sco scooter company is pushing the boundaries in eco-friendly transportation. People would have the opportunity to feel power themselves. Videos would display Taiwan's bike-sharing success stories, rapid drought transit systems, and highway grid. Taiwan is also a world leader in garbage recycling. Companies would display and demonstrate their product manufactured completely from recycled materials. Electronic gadgets to garden furniture, shoes to water bottles, it has been done. Each day of Taiwan Day, we also have a demonstration of how garbage is typically and efficiently collected using makeshift musical garbage trucks for amusement. Now we will have Winnie to give us some examples. Weather in Taiwan is subtropical. 
it is a perfect place to grow many different types of fruit, vegetables, and tea. There is wells of fresh produce for every season. Luckily, for Taiwanese people, there is a food stand on almost every street and street corner offering local delights. In addition to a Taiwan Day, will be the setting up of a Taiwanese traditional street market. Stalls will line the exhibition hall. Beef noodle soup, dumplings, oyster omelette, and bubble milk tea will be just a step away for you to experience and enjoy. In addition, an exhibition of a pass from fresh tea leaves to the process it takes to end up in your cup will be on show. Everyone could enjoy a cup of tea, Taiwan style. And now we'll have Kalista for the conclusion. Until you have visited Taiwan, you cannot truly appreciate its natural beauty. To increase awareness and desire for foreigners to visit, we then act the following initiative. In the Pyro Month to Taiwan Day, a national competition for photographs that best capture Taiwan's awesome natural beauty will be promoted. A display of the finalist photograph would be displayed throughout the three-day event each detailing its location and history. Once again, the attendees' voting will determine the ultimate winner. People, welcome to Taiwan. Thank you. The 28th演讲的题目是number three,计时开始. What is World Health Organization? Ladies and gentlemen, the World Health Organization was created in 1948 with the sole purpose of providing health service and education to a world audience. Of course, the WHO does a lot more than this, but I don't think we have enough time to cover it all. The WHO provides help regarding health systems, communicable, and non communicable diseases like HIV, malaria, cancer, stroke, tuberculosis, response and surveillance of health issues. They perform risk assessment of countries, hit by epidemics and outbreaks, providing support where needed. Later, Tina will continue the speech. Thank you, Chris. More than 7,000 people from more than 150 countries work for the World Health Organization. They work from more than 150 countries' offices, six regional offices, and headquarters in Geneva, Switzerland. The WHO has helped countries all over the world evaluate, research, and cure health issues and continues to do so. What is Taiwan's contribution to world health effort? From 2009 to 2016, Taiwan has been invited to the World Health Assembly, WHA, as an observer and share its unique experience in the field of medical science, as well as preventing the spread of various contagious diseases, greatly contributing to global society. Now, Let's welcome Sandy. Thank you, Tina. Taiwan was the first country in Asia to implement a national health insurance program, which boasts its current rates of 99.9% of GDP. Medical expenditure in Taiwan has accounts for a mere 6.5% of GDP. Since Taiwan launched its national health insurance program, which insurance program, the, the, current, the current rate of 99.9% and the, since Taiwan launched its national health insurance program, an HI program 23 years ago, Current life expectancy in Taiwan has accounts for a mere 6.5% to 80.2 years. 
NHI is a global benchmark in universal coverage and offers valuable lessons in, un in universal coverage and offers valuable lessons in delivering high quality, cost expected medical care for all. Taiwan is willing and in a position to share its experience with the WHO and other nations. The next speaker is Betty. Thank you, Fendi. In recent years, Taiwan has established a comprehensive disease prevention system and organized numerous Chinese workshops and at building capacity to prevent Ebola, MERS, Dengue fever, and Zika in the Asia Pacific and Southeast Asia, thereby facilitating collective efforts to strengthen global health security. This year, due to political obstruction, Taiwan has not been invited to attend the WHA meeting. So are able to share our insights and experience on the world health matters. We urge this obstruction to be lifted as Taiwan can provide valuable assistance to a world stage. Ladies and gentlemen, this is all of our speech. Thanks. Number five. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Can you imagine the AI technology of Taiwan and food industry of Vietnam can collaborate to make an innovation in sweet potato chips? Two months ago, I planned to travel to Vietnam. Luckily, I found dishes made by sweet potato in Vietnam as well. One local farmer told me that recently, many Taiwanese scholars and agricultural producers have been to assist them. While Vietnam is known for agricultural diversity, Taiwan's industries are famous for chase back systems. Thus, more and more Taiwanese people are willing to use high tech of Taiwan in vegetable industry in Vietnam. People believe that through exchange progress, we can enhance both the quality and the quantity of agriculture in Vietnam. This is absolutely a stepping stone in promoting the relationship between Taiwan and Vietnam as well as other Southeast Asian countries. Next, my teammate Henry is going to share with us some examples. Thank you, Coco. Moreover, in our daily life, Medical treatment is also an important issue. Taiwan's medical technology and the technique are well known. It's our pride that Taiwan's medical technique ranks number one in Asia and the number three in the whole world. Taiwan's medical team, doctors, and our government have not only contributed their time to global disease prevention networks, but also provided professional experience to the international community. Taiwanese medical team provided clinical diagnosis and a cure for infants and the children. They also offer mobile medical services and medical training for doctors in other Southeast Asian countries. In June 2018, Taiwan proposed the strategy, One Country, One Center. The strategy has strengthened overseas epidemic prevention to ensure people's health and safety in our neighboring countries. Next, my teammate, Zoe, is going to introduce other countries the epidemic prevention of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. Thank you, Harry. I've got another example to share. Approximately two months ago, my sister found a job as a Chinese teacher in one of the language centers in Taipei. She told me that there were several Southeast Asian students in her class because of the encouragement from Taiwanese government. Since 2018, four short-term language institutions have taken part in teaching foreigners Chinese, especially for Southeast Asian students. 
There are more than 40,000 Southeast Asian students studying in Taiwan now, and the number will soar to 58,000 next year. She even prepared some authentic Taiwanese topics for teaching, such as food, landscape, and Taiwanese songs. She's enhancing the relationship between Taiwan and Southeast Asian countries by minimizing the language and culture gap. Furthermore, she is also learning Southeast Asian languages in National Chengdu University and invites her Southeast Asian students to share some hometown dishes with her classmates. Next, my teammate Oscar is going to conclude these examples above for you. Thank you, Coco. Briefly speaking, there are diverse ways to enhance the relation with new South Bowl partner countries. First, the cooperation of venomous agriculture and Taiwanese traceback system. Second, the subsidies and scholarship that Taiwanese government offered to Southeast Asia to study in Taiwan. Last but not least, the interaction and cultural exchange between both local and official Southeast Asian and Taiwanese people. Apart from food industry and cultural aspect, Taiwan's medical team are also making effort to improve the relation with our partner countries. Taiwan has the best, medical te best professional team and medical in the world, while more than qualified and ought to be allowed to return in the We are ought to be allowed to return to the WHO. By taking one small step at a time, we can make huge success in the end. Thank you for listening. The 24th演講的題目是 Number 1,計時開始 Honorable judges, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. I used to think about the work of diplomacy, and I thought that it was just a group of people working in the office and have meetings every day discussing about things that have nothing to do with me. Not until I started to study this topic recently, I found that it has everything to do with us. I think Trade is one of the best examples of how it influences our lives. After 12 years of hard work of our government, Taiwan has finally become a member state of World Trade Organization, enabling global products, services, and knowledge to have more fair transaction. That's why we can buy inexpensive imported goods ranging from produce to high-tech products these days. As the tariff became lower, it not only expands our market to other countries, but also brings our high-quality products to the world stage. Besides trade, diplomacy also brings us convenience traveling abroad. Now, let's welcome my teammate, Devon, to tell you more about it. Devon, please. Thanks, Nini. My aunt loves everything about Japan. So she often books a flight and visits Japan the next day whenever she wants. Such convenience has a lot to do with diplomacy. Taiwan passport holders have been granted visa-free access and visa on arrival to visit up to 140 countries all around the world, such as Japan, the United States, and the United Kingdom. So we no longer have to apply for entering this country and wait for the permission, which enable us to visit other countries more conveniently. Speaking of passport, do you know that Taiwan passport is valuable in the black market? It's worth 50,000 to 100,000 US dollars. That's because Taiwan passport is one of the most useful passport in the world. Besides, visa free drives tourism in Taiwan. Diplomacy can enhance interaction between countries, from trade to travel, even education. Next, we'll have Mandy to tell you more about it. Mandy? Please. Thank you, Devon. Youth will be the backbone of the country. In the modern age of globalization, 
Building up a global vision is a must-do thing. So, our government spares no effort in building various kinds of activities which can promote the global vision as amazing, as well as the interaction with youth from all around the world. I think this competition is the greatest example. While preparing for this competition, we've learned a lot about diplomacy, how it works, how it influences our life, what the new southbound policy is, and many other things that I've never seriously thinking of. The Ministry of Foreign Affairs even subsidized the winning teams going abroad to border their minds. And it's going to be a great opportunity to be a diplomatic envoy. Isn't it exciting? Maybe it's easy to be a team diplomat. However, be a real diplomat is not so easy. Rosa, what do you think? Thanks, Mandy. These days, China surprises Taiwan internationally by breaking the relations between Taiwan and other countries. Besides the actions that the Ministry of Foreign Affairs take, what can we do for our country? More and more non international non-governmental activities are held in Taiwan, which promote cultural interaction or technical exchange. It can improve the international visibility of Taiwan. As a student, what can we do to enhance the relationship between Taiwan and other countries? Our school affiliated to the school in Japan and Singapore. They come to visit us every year in October. We held a reception and invite them to our class to have some cultural exchange. It's really an unforgettable experience. Diplomacy has a lot to do with our daily lives. So as we're enjoying the benefits such as visa-free, don't forget those diplomats who devote themselves to giving us a better life. Our speech is over. Thank you. The second speech for the speech is number three. Start. Honorable judges, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. Have you ever heard of a little girl Lon from Vietnam? She was diagnosed with congenital lymphedema when she was only six months old. She had been battling against it for many years. She had received therapies in Vietnam, and yet her condition didn't show any improvement at all. In 2012, a Taiwanese company in Vietnam donated $1 million to sponsor her in receiving therapies in Taiwan. After the first stage of the treatment, she still needed treatment for her thighs and waist. Her father was upset because they didn't have enough money to finish the treatment. Even worse, after she got back to Vietnam, her legs were infected and required urgent treatment. All that her family could do was to pray for a miracle. Then, unexpectedly, her family received a large sum of money from another Taiwanese company in Vietnam. As a result, she could finish the rest of the treatment. After years of operations and recovery, Lo now has a pair of normal legs. She now lives a happy life. The above story is inspiring, isn't it? Over the years, Taiwanese doctors have been treating some patients in foreign countries. Our doctors are excellent, and our medical techniques have received international applause. The medical schools in Taiwan have successfully trained numerous healthcare professionals, and the top hospitals in Taiwan are furnished with advanced medical equipment, such as extracorporeal membrane oxygenation, ECMO, since Taiwan is renowned for its world-class medical techniques and well-trained medical staff, it is not surprising that many of the developed countries, such as the US and Japan, are willing to cooperate with us. Taiwan is highly qualified to improve the health conditions across the globe, and we have a responsibility to do it. Therefore, it is safe to say that 
the world will benefit a lot from Taiwan's participation in the WHO. Angela, can you offer other examples? Of course. For the past few decades, many groups from Taiwan have contributed a lot to the world. For instance, during the Chinese New Year, doctors from Taiwan Roots Medical Peace Groups visit African countries and practice medicine there. Those doctors provide free care and remedies to foreign patients. Another example is that we have managed to control the spread of the tropical diseases, such as malaria and dengue fever. These diseases also break out in the South Asia and the Southeast Asia. Some countries in the area do not have enough vaccine for public injections, and Taiwan has plenty to offer them. What's more, since we are well equipped with medical knowledge, we can provide them effective solutions to help them combat those diseases, like cleaning the drains regularly or using bug sprays when necessary. Unfortunately, Taiwan is not accepted as a member of the WHO. If we could join the WHO, we are sure to create a win-win situation. Through the seminars and conferences in the WHO, Taiwan can interact with other nations. We will get the latest information on health issues and gain access to some advanced medical equipment. Above all, some Taiwanese doctors are adept at herbal medicines. We can share our expertise with doctors around the world and help to cure some chronic diseases or pain. To sum up, Taiwan has contributed a lot to the world. We have some of the most outstanding surgeons and physicians, as well as some advanced medical equipment. And we have been adept at herbal medicines for ages. With Taiwan's advanced medical strengths and techniques, we can bring an abundance of benefits to people around the world if we are allowed to join the WHO. That's all from us. Thank you. The second question is number one. Good morning, judges, student, and teacher. I'm Emily. We think the function of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs is a work that communicate with other countries. This is important because by communicating with other nations, it can stabilize our nation's defense and economy. Also, we can have better relations with other countries. In order to get better relations with them, Taiwan has done many things. For example, visas for the cooperation country, conduct tailing exchange, and expanding scholarship to students from ASEAN country. However, diplomacy shouldn't be as limited as a government matter. It is something that we all have to care about. Thank you. Also, we think arranging visa is one of the most important job of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. Think of that. If it is convenient for foreigners to come to Taiwan, then we will have more opportunities to live and to talk, to be friends with them. Remember that I went to a student exchange program this year, and that helps a lot for me to experience their different cultures. By joining different cultures with us, we can not only learn what's different from us, and we can only be friends with them. What's important about that, communication is the relationship and what we want to do to enhance our relationship to others. And what I want to say less is travel destroys racism and leads to world peace. Thank you. Taiwan enterprises are very competitive around the world. We are needed by many foreign enterprises, such as Apple, which is famous for their product, iMac, iPad, and iPhone. TSMC made the 7 nanometers chips for iPhone. 7 nanometer chips? 
That's a brand new level for technology that no one has ever reached. Our diplomacy work based on trading with foreign countries. Our high technology technique has bring us the chance to be seen by the world. They should know we are not just a little island in Pacific Ocean. We are more than this. Thank you. As they have mentioned, diplomacy includes a lot of things, such as issuing passport and visas for Taiwanese citizens and exchanging ideas or information and, and a lot of things. Okay, so I think the diplomacy is deeply connected to our life. Why? It may sound too far-fetched, but think about when you're using social media like Facebook or Instagram, you are exchanging information and chat with people from all around the world. You may think that, um, it's like, this is just my daily life. But actually, what you are doing is you are involved in diplomacy. This is something that no one wants to talk about because they, they think this is like, oh, this is too easy. This is not things that should be on the speech. So we think diplomacy is not only a government matter, it is also an obligation for Taiwanese people to promote and pass on. Thank, Thank you, you everyone. everyone. Number five, Good morning, dear judges. As with any export, be it material or not, media can also influence the mind of the consumer, both at home and abroad. In a sense, having another country population consume your media above their own is the apex of modern imperialism. However, this is not to say it is all bad. Indeed, it can be a very powerful tool in promoting a positive idea of one country's culture in another. Developing news. Easily comprehensible and exportable TVs, shows, and movies which is sold about that. Along with picturing the countries in a positive light, Inter entertainment would be inter integral, integral step in making other countries keener on maintaining diplomatic relationship with the Republic of China. For example, The Simpson, its American anime sitcom, was integral in producing and protecting the truth of the United States cultural hegemony in the late 20th and early 21st century. Spreading English-speaking satirical comedy around the world, running for over 650 episodes. Not only that, but the show has also helped the model more than English popular language, with many of its catchphrases being listed in the Oxford English Dictionary. Television series such as The Simpsons are fantastic at spreading about spreading positive thoughts about a country because they choose only to portray the ambient culture as a constituent of narrative, not mentioning it clearly. This is the essence of how to acclimate people to an idea. Make it familiar without making it obvious. As soon as an idea you are trying to convey, stand out from the rest of the media, it starts sticking out like a sore thumb. In conclusion, in conclusion, 
developing interesting series and movies whose primary focus, ironically enough, this is not the idea you are trying to promote in reality. It is the more effective way to promote an advantage in Taiwan, in Taiwan foreign countries. In particular, long, long running series have an inter, have an have an advantage in Leicester in Leicester amount of So it's time for us to use, make use of Starbound policy and try our best to promote the international the diplomacy. We do hope that Taiwan can also stand out and influential, and influential in the global village in the near future. Sometimes it really hard to get something start. However, we teenagers should be courageous and optimistic. There are always opportunities for us to make use of. So, don't be afraid. Just do it. Thank you. Number five. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and honorable judges. Today, we would like to share what we think Taiwan can do to enhance stable relations with new southbound policy partners. The new southbound policy focuses on establishing and stabilizing our diplomatic relations with key and principal countries in South Asia and Oceania. By developing and expanding our dominant industries, we can strengthen Taiwan's economy and create strong relations, results in win-win situations with our partners. We strongly believe that sharing experiences and bringing our potential in agriculture, high-tech industries, and medical exchanges to the region can overcome many obstructions we face in diplomatic relations. Now, many will explain further details of agriculture Thank you, Shanti. Agriculture has a long history, but with new technological advances, we have increased the efficiency of our crop industries while lowering cost and improving quality. In Taiwan, we have used crop improvement methods, genetic modification, and disease prevention techniques to ensure plentiful harvest every year. By cooperating with our neighbors, we can improve our regional growth in agriculture to protect all Southeast Asian countries from famine. Global warming and the depletion of ocean resources impact directly the total of our edible food. So it's more important than ever to develop agriculture that is resistant to these new changes in our environment. Global warming and the depletion of ocean resources impact directly Developing farms and founding factories can not only increase employment opportunities, assist local population to learn a professional skill, but also develop agricultural resources for foreign trade that can benefit everyone globally. Next, Emily will discuss new technologies to help develop business sectors across South Asia. Thank you, Mini. And as our society becomes more advanced, technology is increasingly an important issue for both Taiwan and Southeast Asian countries. Taiwan can make electric microgrids and smart grids to solve the lack of electricity for poor or remote areas like we did in Penghu. Besides, electronic toll collection systems will ease their traffic problems while smart cities and smart stores may be a possible solution to create a new consumer market in developed areas. We will need to improve our techniques too, so building up an Asian Silicon Valley may be a good idea. 
This can attract more Southeast Asians to come to work with us, and the interflow of skills would benefit us all. By establishing a public cooperation platform for business, things may become easier. Not only that, but customized products can further develop our relationships through business. Next, Cindy will tell us more about Taiwan's southbound policy. Thanks, Emily. Our government shares healthcare developments to strengthen the medical cooperation between Taiwan and Southeast Asian countries. In addition to utilizing our medical soft power to treat patients from other countries and providing training for medical technicians, Taiwan also exports medication and medical appliances and assists in the construction of medical facilities. The Ministry of Health and Welfare came up with a proposal to partner six hospitals in Taiwan with sister hospitals in other countries. Taiwan Hospital, for example, is responsible for Indonesia, while Taichung Veterans General Hospital is responsible for Vietnam. These hospitals can offer medical technologies and invite some foreign doctors to receive internships in Taiwan. Those doctors can bring their newly learned skills back to their countries. In addition, our biotechnology companies can support the hospitals in Southeast Asian countries by setting up medical equipment that they need. This way, it's profitable to both countries. Here's Shanti to conclude our speech. Thank you, Cindy. Taiwan has strong private enterprises and various kinds of soft power. By sharing our skills and technology for the betterment of our neighbors, we can all profit from strengthened relations. Our small-scale electric power as well as our medical and agricultural technologies can help vulnerable populations in their home countries. This kind of exchange between Taiwan and the rest of the world is integral to promoting Taiwanese culture and staying connected to the global community. Thank you.